But uh, George, not the result you wanted at the weekend at Irish, but in terms of the performance, in terms of the attitude, how, how pleased were were you with what you saw? Yeah, I, I thought the um, I thought the attitude was great. Actually, um, you know, we were disappointed, I suppose, with um, a few bits at Saints when we put ourselves in a position to win that, and we had pretty honest meeting on the Monday, um, just about you know certain things. Uh, again, attitude is probably the big one because. We know we're not playing perfect rugby or anything like that, and there's, you know, this. We talk about that as we've talked about plenty of times in these calls and discuss things. But there was a little bit of a drop off in a couple of moments in that game that ultimately were seven point drop offs and, and happened a few times, and the game ran away. So we talked about that, and I, I thought the attitude was um, was spot on. And I guess it's now it's building on that going into Friday night. Yeah, absolutely. Like you know, the guys are aware it's. Uh, we worked really hard and the attitude was spot on but we didn't get what we wanted you know fully from the game and, and I think the boys were disappointed you know there's a couple of areas again that um, we've talked about all week but yeah in, in the end when you throw yourself in like the boys did on Saturday and give everything they've got and you, you don't quite get the result it's um, it's frustrating but the um, the beauty is this game's you know creeping up on an extremely quickly and um, looking forward to it. And from your point of view, are you seeing a progression? Are you seeing things improving week on week? You know, is, is that win getting closer? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, on Saturday, there's a couple of bits and pieces. If if we'd done some simple things a little bit better up front, really, uh, to be honest, that, um, yeah, I think we could have easily won the game. And I think, um, you know, there's a couple of opportunities we had where we just didn't quite get it across the line or drop the ball. And those things come off and it's a very different story. So... Uh, I thought it was a very composed um, game, particularly from Billy. Uh, Bristol, obviously, Derby coming up. Um, another tough game for you, but how much are you looking forward to it? Yeah, well, it, it doesn't get much tougher than, than Bristol, who are top of the league, obviously. And, and you know, they play great rugby. And, um, you know, they're, they're a tough team to analyse because they do, you know, they've, they've scored uh, a lot of mall tries. They've scored a lot of wonder tries out the back. You know, there's a lot of variation in what they do and they're coached very, very well. So, um, it's exciting because it, you know it's a local derby, and um, you know it, it, they are the, the best team currently in the country. So it's exciting that they're coming, and it's it's another level just to test ourselves. Have Sale sh- shown you how to beat Bristol, or actually, will that actually make them more determined? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they'll be uh, they'll be disappointed with the result last week. So uh, I'm I'm fully expecting a, a very sharp Bristol team who. Um, you know, have, have probably had a week. Uh, they're, they're not lo- used to losing too much, so they've probably had a week they've not enjoyed. And um, I, I'm, I'm certain they'll come here really sharp and wanting to make amends for last week. Yeah, they're going to be without Semi Rad Radra. I mean, how, how big is that for them? Him out injured, he, he's he's sparkled, hasn't he, this season? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously he's a great player, and, and you know, it's, uh, it, it, you don't want to be on the receiving end of it. But when you're watching it, he, you know, he's one of those guys. It's exciting to watch, but. Um, you know, Bristol's not built on one one player. There's uh, there's plenty of other guys in that back line, you know, Piatau and the like, who who can light the place up. So um, yeah, you know, obviously they, I'm sure they'd rather have him in the team, but you know they they've got stardust all over the place in that squad. So it's um, you know there's there's plenty of threats even without him on the field. Yeah, and they've got a few ex Gloucester players as well. Dan Thomas, Henry Purdy. I guess they're the kind of clubs who having been released by Gloucester obviously before your time but they're, they're always going to come and w- maybe with a, a point to prove Yeah I mean there's a pretty good 15 out there across the league that's been uh, that's come through this place I'm, I'm finding out more and more as I, as I dig deeper and deeper so um, there is a couple of lads down there and uh, you know they um, obviously came through and they're, they're doing really well for Bristol which um, you know wouldn't be the objective of young lads coming through the club but um, I, I don't know those guys personally as you say that's before my time but um, they're certainly playing well for Bristol now and how impressive have you been with Bristol and how far they've moved on you know over the last couple of seasons adapting to being back in the Premiership and now really being a force yeah well I, I think you know I think Bristol was smart I think you know when, when they were um, you know coming back into the Prem they built some really good foundations in the Championship with the right sort of um, hard working players and and over the last three or four years or whatever it is, they've slowly added quality and quality and Pat's built his game plan and, you know, he's, he's been smart in how he's built the club up in the last few years and, and now it's all coming to fruition and, um, you know, they've slowly crept up the table year after year after year and, and now here they are, they're top of the table and, and they're looking good. And I guess from your point of view, that shows it, it does take time, doesn't it, to build a club up and to, to, to get to that point and that's obviously something you're at the start of. 
Yeah, and, and, and yeah, exactly, it's exactly right. And I, I've never, um, you know, I, I'd love to come in and turn, you know, turn the fortunes around in a in a couple of months or whatever, and just go, yeah, there you go. But that's the reality, and and that's um, I've said before, you know, we've got a very strong plan. We're, we're happy about how we're going with that plan. It doesn't make it any less painful when you're trying to build things and you're going through the process, even though you knew, you know, it was going to be hard work. But yeah, there's a lot of good. Um, blueprints if you like you know Bristol are doing it now Exeter have done it um, London Irish have uh, you know have, have gone through that process as well and, and there's loads of other clubs in that and you know when you get it right and you put the foundations and you layer on top you know the the rewards are there at the end but yeah you, you've, you've got to be patient you've got to do it the right way there's, there's no point trying to skip cut corners and all the rest because I think it will just come crumbling down and uh, obviously weather conditions not ideal this week very cold and Frozen pitches, I'm sure. Will that play a part on Friday? Will it be, you know, whoever adapts to those conditions the best? Well, I think it's predicted to be minus six. Uh, and I don't know what it is right now, but I've, I've just come off the training pitch and got here and it, it, I'm still, you know, thawing out. So uh, it is very, very cold. Um, but, you know, the, the lads are running around like madmen anyway, so their, their heart rates are through the roof. So it'll be, it'll be us sitting in the stands who suffer worse than the players, I think. <laughs>